Hi there, this is Jenny from College Calm, and I am just walking you through how to finalize and submit your coalition application. So what we're going to do tonight is just kind of look through what a finalized application looks like. And you'll see when I log into the coalition application at the top here, I have a home button, my profile, my locker, colleges and help. Um, the college is where you start off and you search for schools and add those to your list. Your locker holds the PDF that you generate and also official documents. And your profile is what we're working on right now. So when you first log in, you won't see any of these blue check marks. Everything will be incomplete. There won't be a blue check mark next to each of the pieces of your profile. So what we're going to do is just kind of look through my college list at the bottom bottom here. And then at the top, we're going to work on my profile. So you see here that my, my profile is 100% complete. And if at any time I want to review this profile, I can click on generate profile PDF and a copy of that PDF hides in my locker. The other thing that's nice about the coalition application is you can actually keep the profile check on the entire time and it'll tell you if you've missed any sections. So the rest of this is pretty straightforward. In order to get a blue check mark with a circle, you just need to make sure that you answer all of the questions that have a red asterisk next to it. Personal information is pretty straightforward. Um, you answer all of these questions and then you click continue or, and go on to contact information. The contact information, again, super straightforward. Just wanna make sure that you put all of your information in there correctly. The demographic asks some questions about your background and the language that you speak. Then it goes on to citizenship again, which is pretty um, self-explanatory. You can just walk through that information. Then it asks for your family information. It asks about your parents, about your siblings. Um, for sake of me not having to fill more out, I just put that I have two parents. Um, so our household is uh, three people. And then it asks you questions about your parents' background. And parents, this could also be a time that you kind of step in and help them because um, it just wants to know what educational institution you attended, if you attended any, and your highest level of degree. Then it asks for high school information. So you want to be able to look for, for your high school and um, put the dates of attendance. Obviously, it's not 2014 to 2020. So you want to make sure that you have that correct. Um, and then it asks about your most recent academic year, which would be 12th grade year. It asks about... Um, your GPA, which most of us have a weighted GPA out of a 4.0 scale. Then it asks for your cumulative weighted GPA, which I would put in here. And then they ask you about your class rank and the school size. Here you can invite your counselor to um, fill out a, rep, um, a recommendation. And then they ask a question about the GED. So again, as you go through this, you answer all the required questions. If you've taken a college course, you would list it here. I said no for sake of not having to complete that. But if you have questions on that, you can ask your counselor as well. The ninth through 11th grade coursework is a place that a lot of students um, need some support on so to make sure that you add your classes correctly. When you click on ninth grade, the interface is a little bit weird in here. Um, it asks about the type of class, whether it's an advanced IV, you know, other. Uh, you want to answer that question. It asks about the grading scale. So you'll put letters or if you're zero to 100, you'll put numbers. If it asks about your school not, not um, providing grades, um, then it asks if your course is a full year or a semester or trimester or quarters. So you want to pay attention to that. And if you mark semester, you want to put how many semesters you've actually taken the class. And then most students are going to have one grade per term. 
Um, so you just want to ask how it's reported on your transcript. So when you do these, you want to make sure that you have a copy of your transcript and that you're putting your classes in exactly how they appear on your transcript. That's the most important part. If there's a discrepancy as to what you're putting in here and it's self-reporting and your transcript, you just don't want that to look fishy. So we'll want to make sure that at the end when we preview it, that it appears exactly how it appears on your transcript. The semester grades and the semester classes are usually the ones that trip students up. So like in 12th grade, if you took economics one semester and government another semester, you just want to make sure you're marking those appropriately. Okay, so I will go through and show you where that coursework is in the PDF preview, but that's just something that you want to check for. Oh, going back there, the other thing that they ask for the coalition is if you took algebra or geometry in seventh or eighth grade, or if you took a language and then started out in a higher language in ninth grade, you want to put um, your ninth grade or earlier classes in uh, with your ninth grade classes as well. And then 12th grade, that's your courses in progress. Obviously, you're not going to have any grades yet, but you're, you're going to put in progress um, for each of those classes, okay? So if I click on English and language arts, you see I have English. Um, the type of class is just like a regular class. So it's not applicable, it's a letter grade. I'm taking it semesters, first and second, one grade per term. And then the only thing that's different is instead of putting in a semester grade, I would put in progress here and not started yet for semester two. So I'm not going to have any grades listed for um, senior year. Okay, then on to college coursework. If you took a college class, you would report your grade and term and everything in that in, in, in this section. Um, then you'll move on to SAT, ACT and report your highest grades um, in your highest test scores, highest total score, highest evidence-based writing score, and highest math score. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put future dates that you're taking or how many times you're, um, you took it in the past. Uh, it's up to you if you just want to report your highest score, but you should check your uh, college's policies on how many tests you should report and, and whether or not it's the highest or if you should just report all of those. Then if you have any SAT subject tests to report, AP exams, IB exams, or any future exams, you can put those in the additional tests. Most people, um, the English proficiency you're not, you, that we work with aren't going to have taken the TOEFL, um, so you're just going to mark no. And then this section, actually be careful that um, when you go through here, because I went through and checked my, um, that I needed a, a fee waiver and actually submitted an application without having to pay. Um, you just want to be honest about this. And if you've received any of these fee waivers, check the box. If none of these apply to you, then just check none apply to me. Honors and distinctions, um, you would put any honors or awards in this area. Academic interest, this is simply asking you um, about your academic interest. That doesn't concern major, it's just any academic interest that you have. And then activities, you want to be sure that you read this. It actually wants you to list your top two activities first. And then you have a maximum of eight activities that you can list here, which is a little bit different than the Common App where you can list 10 and the UCs where I think you can list up to 15. So here for the personal statement, you're going to click on which coalition application essay topic you're responding to. You can always click on submit an essay topic of your choice if your other essays don't um, adhere to these questions, and then you're going to copy and paste this. Note that this um, 
essay length is actually shorter than the common application essay. So you want to make sure that if you're using the common application essay that you've uh, tailored this down to 500 to 550 words and then you put your essay right there. So once you're finished this section, you can actually go through and generate a PDF if you click right here to check your profile. Okay, and then it says your PDF is successfully generated. You will find it in your locker. So if you click on your locker and you go to media, it's going to give you a profile. Um, this is going to be your finished application that you can check. So here you can print it or you can download it and look at it on the big screen, but this is the view that your admissions people will see. So you just want to make sure that everything looks correct. Um, make sure household information is correct. Um, high school information, this is where you can check your grades, your high school coursework. I recommend students going through um, with their parents and just double checking that all of your A pluses, A minuses, A's are entered in correctly, um, that you have both semesters listed for coursework. And then of course, double checking, you know, your 12th grade coursework that it says in progress, not started. That's important. And then again, going through your honors and distinctions, your activities and awards, your test scores, and then making sure that no parts of your coalition essay got cut off and that everything looks appropriate in there. Okay. So you can't actually submit from this profile screen. You actually have to go in um, to the individual colleges in order to submit your application. So your profile is just what gets sent to everything, everyone, and then your colleges are the college specific questions. So if you scroll down to the University of Texas at Austin, which is where I'm going to continue with my application, I click on that, it opens up, it says these are all the things that you need. And then as I continue on to my application, it asks me for all of these things. So my profile is completed right here. As you see, I get this check mark. My program is completed, so I answered that question. My term is completed fall 2020. All of my official documents are uploaded. Um, all required documents not completed within must be sent separately. Uh, my application questions are, are reported and then uploads I haven't started yet. So if I go to uploads, you can see I need to attach um, <clears throat> the required essay and an optional resume and then I can attach actually up to three photographs. So once I do that, I'll get that um, check mark, <clears throat> and then I can actually go ahead and submit. If I go back here, you'll see that once my uploads are completed, I'll get that check here, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Submit Application. Now, at any time, if I want to run a PDF of this application, I would generate the PDF, and then it's going to be in my locker. So once I get all of these green, or sorry, these black check marks in a circle, the submit application button will light up and then I can click submit application and I'll pay my $75 for UT Austin and then that will be where I actually submit the application. So it's not in the profile section, it's actually in the colleges section. Okay, so I hope that that gives you a clearer picture of the coalition application. Remember, you go through your profile, locker is where you're storing everything, colleges is where you do your actual submitting. If you have any questions, as always, please contact your college comm counselor. We are here to support you. Thanks so much.